Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel and welcome to a new real life car review. In this episode I'm driving the updated Lexus ES300 Hybrid. I could have left the last bit out because the Hybrid is the only powertrain available in Europe. However, we do get a broad variety in trim levels, starting at 62,000 for the base trim level. And then you can add more and more luxury until you get to the president line which costs 78,000 euros but the Lexus ES isn't all about luxury there also is a sporty variant which is this the F Sport but how does Lexus do that having one engine option doing luxury and sporty at the same time well there's only one way to find out and before we do that I would like to ask you to subscribe to the channel leave a comment give me a like that really helps me out a big deal so let's start off by having a peek under the hood the large car comes a large hood but we have two nice gas struts if you notice in these corners over here these are the uh, explosive charges for the pedestrian safety system so if a pedestrian gets hit these explode and the hood pops up so you have the bonnet that can deform and the person in question doesn't get hit or hits one of the harder parts of the engine so this is Toyota and Lexus go-to hybrid powertrain for the larger models it's used in the NX and the RX also and of course here in the ES two and a half liter four cylinder um, it's the A25A-FEX it has a bore of 87 and a half millimeters and the stroke of and I'll have to look this up stroke is 103.4 millimeters so it's a typical long stroke engine thermal efficiency is pretty high 41 percent it delivers 178 horsepower 221 newton meters then we have the hybrid part of the drivetrain which contains two electric motors but the main electric motor is 88 kilowatts 120 horsepower and it has 202 newton meters of torque combined system output is 218 horsepower and 221 newton meters of torque and of course i'll blink the translations in screen as said this is the go-to drivetrain but the es it's the first generation ES we get over here in Europe and this is the car that replaces the GS. The GS was a longitudinal mount engine, rear wheel drive and the ES traditionally has been based on the Camry platform so that means it has a transversely mount engine and a transaxle and this front wheel drive in theory in basis. Um, there are all wheel drive versions available but those have an electric E axle to make it a four wheel drive version. It's a tried and true engine as said it has a high thermal efficiency and it should have good fuel economy. I'll get to that in the drive segment later. Everything looks nice and neat. Everything is nice covered up around here. I had a lot of panels, a large engine cover over here. You can see a lot of lines but no need to complain actually because this just works if you do your oil changes filters fluids spark plugs and um, this car comes with a 10-year warranty over here and yeah this is something you'll never have to look at i noticed that there's noise insulation on the strut towers here of course a lot of noise insulation on the bonnet and there is a strut brace over here made of yeah stamped steel um, looks a bit cheap but i'm um, guessing it's very effective now this car is as i said the f sport version and one of the main differences is that this car has the adaptive variable suspension so it has variable shock absorbers that works really well i'm going to get in detail on that on the uh, drive segment and now i'm looking at this strut brace i'm not sure if it's standard for all versions of the car um, i'll blink that in screen but other than that yeah nothing much to talk about here then this is a really super tried and true reliable engine with great fuel economy how good it is let's see um, normally i would go to the interior segment but in this case i want to start off in the rear passenger seat one of the most important reasons you would choose a lexus es is the rear passenger space because folks this is the best in this series yet 
I know for a fact that the rear passenger space is larger than in Lexus LS. Only thing is in the LS you can get the reclining and massaging seats. You can get that in the ES but not the massaging function. So if you have the ES president line you do get reclining seat but no massaging function. And also in the e, uh, president line you'll get a separate climate zone for the rear and heated seats. And that's one of the downfalls of this trim level. Uh, we do not have heated seats. Uh, I do not have a separate climate zone and I also miss the sunshades for the side windows. There is a large sunshade for the rear window, but I do miss the heated seats in here and those shades in the, in the windows. So let me get my camera and show you around. So we have a vents over here, two USB-C outlets, there's a 12 volt power outlet, a nice cup holder, two cup holders and an armrest with room for storage and there are two reading lights over here. In the F-Sport you get a black headliner and everything from the uh, shoulder line up is black and this real nice soft uh, red upholstery it's very nice leather really soft to the touch and also it gets a Mark Levinson audio system now let's do the window test and as you may expect the visibility towards the outside is just great seating comfort is like I said the best in this series yet so let me open up the door again I think it's a little miss what that we don't have the uh, extra luxury but when you pick this car for seating comfort and you're the one being chauffeured around in the back, the Lexus ES is a better choice than the Lexus LS. Um, before I head over to the front and talk about the interior, let's have a quick peek in the cargo space. Let's see if this works. Swipe with your foot, electric trunk opener. It opens really nice and smooth, I notice now. And this is a pretty large cargo area, only the opening is limited, but that's what you have with sedans nowadays. Important fact is 454 liters of trunk space, and there is, yeah, a very thin uh, trunk floor, I must say. This is a bit flimsy, it's the first time I get this up. And in the spare wheel, well, we don't get a spare wheel, but a tire repair kit and a car jack and some other small goodies and there are pockets here to the side for extra storage no that's a lie that's the battery over here and on this side there's a small bin for really tiny stuff so you can stuff any shoes or anything underneath the cargo floor so there is a hatch in the middle if need be to put your skis through but um yeah it's large enough but due to its size and its opening it has some limitation but when, you, when you're with a family of four and you're going on a two or three week holiday it's plenty enough to get all your uh, luggage all your holiday luggage in here so let's close this up and let's have a peek in the interior that is nice and smooth all right it's a bit cold and windy today so let me start up the car here's the lexus ingress and egress function in action let's put it in ev mode so the car doesn't start up the lexus es in its current iteration after the update is a mix of the old and the new style lexus the old style lexus brings this uh, instrument panel with those two buttons on the side those two horns over here for the drive mode and the traction control system and yeah the layout of the instrument panel is what we know from the older generations and i like this over the new screens in the lexus nx and rx what's new in this car is that it has the uh, new infotainment system so what they did let me put it on that um, they moved it forward gone is the touchpad so now you have a touch screen and yeah this system we know pretty well in this car it comes with the mark levinson updated premium audio system it's an amazing system it's not as good as in the lexus rx because that system in the rx really blew me off my socks even at lower volume you could hear it was an amazing system you you hear details at lower volume that i never noticed in this car you have to crank it up a little to be able to tell that this is a yeah high-end uh, system at lower volume it's not uh, impressive but once you crank it up you think oh boy um 
the instrument panel in the F part. Let me get my action cam so I can demonstrate. So um, this is a different system that you get in other trim levels because it has the famous sliding bezel, the part that we know from the LV and the LC, and it has the sport drive mode and in the F sport you get the S plus drive mode. In this drive mode Let's slide that back over. Um, he, it stiffens up the suspension, the shock absorbers even more, the steering noticeably changes and the throttle response changes. And I think when you put it in S-Port, it feels like the car is shrinking in terms of weight and vehicle dimensions. I'll get to that in the drive segment. But I have, yeah, I wouldn't say a point of critique, but uh, yeah, when you get the sliding bezel and you get the F-Sport, uh, this is the sporty layout for the instrument panel. And the thing I'm missing, it would be nice to have an oil temperature gauge and an oil pressure gauge when you go into sport mode. You know, so let's sweat, switch back to its normal drive mode. So this is the normal layout. The well-known um, infotainment system, it's fast, it ages really well, I like this system. Over here we have the climate control panel, and it does the same trick as in the Lexus LS, it rolls over the indicators really nice when you change the temperature setting. Now let's switch it off. Down here are the buttons for the heated seat and the heated steering wheel. This button is for the sun blind in the rear window. One thing that I miss in this car is the option for ventilated seats. I have uh, been through the brochures and it seems that no trim level of the Lexus ES comes with ventilated seats. Now, maybe me misreading the brochures and if you can fill me in on that, let me know down below in the comment section. And as you can see, it has an auto function, which means it switches on, it measures your body temperature. And one nice thing that I notice, it has the Hey Lexus command prompt. And when I, as a driver, says, Hey Lexus, I'm cold, it raises the temperature on the driver's side. And when my passenger would say the same, it raises the temperature on the passenger side. So it is, yes, sensitive. It, it's directional sensitive uh, apparently now as you can see here are my sunglasses and here's my wallet and there's a small uh, storage space over here but unfortunately there is no space for my sunglasses oh yeah and this is sensitive it's a nice touch but with uh, uh, with no need anymore for the touchpad because this is a touch screen we now have a large cup holder and over here is the charger pad wireless charger for the phones and this is the armrest it opens two ways with a large compartment storage compartment two usb-c chargers 12 volt outlet um, one thing that i miss and i think is a miss is this sunlight the sliding sunlight as you can see it's manual and in this car in this class of vehicle and this price point that at least should be uh, electrical i think and also it lacks a bit of quality would be good in a toyota not so much in a lexus on to the seats as you can see it has the f sport logos embossed in the headrest real nice soft leather it's padded so when you sit down on it you land on a soft cushion and then you sit on a firmer cushion the bolsters don't seem too impressive but trust me these hold you in place really well and the same beautiful red leather is uh, used in the doors there's the red stitching it also goes on the dashboard and over here on the steering wheel the steering wheel also is really nice to the touch and you get several f sport logos all around the car but overall the build quality the materials used in this interior is what you expect from a lexus it's just magnificent it's great and in the s part you also get this aluminium sorry i can't say aluminum aluminium panels which is real aluminium beautifully made and this is a real nice thing and as in the rx once you close the door you're in a quiet cocoon of your own isolated from the outside world so that's the interior of the car um let's head out for a drive put on your seat seat belt the cost goes to the preset mode, seat goes to the preset mode, start a car and there's nothing I have to switch off, no speed warning, no lane departure warning. If I want to switch off the lane departure warning, I just hold down this button to 
until the icon disappears it's in two seconds and that's all i have to do and for that and that reason alone i love this car now as you may expect from a lexus it's super quiet from the get-go the car shares its underpinnings with some Toyota models but this has been given the Lexus treatment so a lot of extra noise insulation and uh, vibration dampeners harmonic dampeners on the suspension part which makes which make this car super quiet well, today the car is super quiet um, so this is the F Sport you get 19 inch wheels and with those 19 inch wheels you get a sport your tires these are Dunlops I believe and um, yeah, it has a little bit more road noise than in the other versions with the smaller wheels and you have some higher side walls. That's something you have to keep in mind. But overall, the Lexus ES is a very quiet and comfortable, comfortable car. And the same goes for the F Sport trim level. However, that is, of course, a technical difference. Um, there's one thing I need to point out here that also is an F Sport design trim level uh, that gets all the uh, cosmetic interior and exterior parts, so it looks the deal, but it doesn't get the technical difference, uh, technical suspension upgrades as this F Sport has. Now I'm cruising along over here and I think this car is almost just as comfortable as any other Lexus ES is. So it's not hard, it's not bumpy, there's a little bit more tire noise as I just explained. But yeah, in terms of ride refinement, it's a Lexus. It's just as comfortable as my Lexus LS on air suspension. Um, however, uh, I didn't notice all that much of the adaptive variable shock absorbers until a colleague of mine, Irvin, who also runs a very good car test YouTube channel, link over here, uh, he asked me about it and I said, well, I don't notice all that much of the uh, shock absorbers, but I'm a slow driver. I usually don't feel that kind of stuff until you start pushing the car but he said yeah even on the normal driving circumstances you can tell that it's an active suspension and he's absolutely right now we're approaching a speed bump and i hope the camera picks this up hold on a second so here we are there's the speed bump up and down and the car is at rest immediately. I was going a bit too hard. I should have slowed down, but I did that on purpose. Um, what the active variable suspension does, uh, it keeps the vehicle motions to a minimum. The car is always very uh, flat and even and level on the road. Uh, you go over a speed bump, the suspension soaks up the suspension travel and immediately after that the car is quiet and it does it very quick and it does it very controlled so the car is not harsh it's not bouncy there's another speed bump allow me to demonstrate going up going down and the body of the car is at rest right away and also when you're approaching a corner and we have a nice quick corner over here let's build up some speed a bit too much speed steer in it's very controlled and the car is very flat and very stable on the road so that's the value of having that active variable suspension now when i flick the car into sport mode it doesn't change all that much but when i go into s plus mode uh, you can really tell that the suspension is stiffening up like it's tensioning its muscles the steering wheel response also changes i need very little input It was a bit harsher over that speed bump, but the same is that the car, the bodywork is at ease immediately after you pass the obstacle. So that's very good. Let's go back into normal drive mode. And it's a comfortable cruiser all of a sudden again. It's very instant, uh, the change in uh, Sport mode, especially the Sport Plus mode. So if you like the idea of having a semi LC or LOA for that matter, uh, oh, let's give way to this friendly people over here. If you like the idea of having a comfortable car and a sporty car, the F Sport uh, may be a very interesting choice for you. I'm not sure. Now a bit harder under acceleration. Now a bit even more. Yeah, that's what you get with a four-cylinder. You do miss the sound of the V6. 
or even a V8 for that matter. But yeah, it's never knowing. And when you can, you can flick the transmission into manual mode and you can shift with the gear lever. Only thing is that they change the upshift and downshift. I think upshift should be pulling the lever towards you, downshift is pushing it away. It's always been that way in rally cars. I believe the, uh, the GR Yaris has the same too, but here it's opposite. You have to push for an upshift and pull for a downshift. That's the wrong way around. And that's something that should be changed. And then you have the flappy paddles behind the steering wheel and they feel really nice. I haven't used them, but um, they have a nice quality feel to them. Nice, solid, clicky feeling. Now I'm in uh, auto mode, so it doesn't respond to this. So now I'm back into normal drive mode. That's a big road here. Going into comfort mode, so to speak, so I can talk to you about this drivetrain. As said, this hybrid engine option is the only one available over here. And it works really well for the comfortable uh, trim levels of the Lexus ES. And I must say, it doesn't disappoint in this F-Sport. I think Lexus has had additional programming for the S Plus drive mode because I can feel there's a lot more torque in the lower rev range. So when you pull out of a car and you go on the throttle, there is more torque than you would have in the other lineup. So that's an additional uh, programming in the engine and uh, drivetrain ECU. Uh, yeah, the only thing is, yeah, the sound, it's a four-cylinder. Um, I do miss the V6 sound in this car. That would add to the feel, but in terms of efficiency and performance, this two and a half liter also works really well in the F-Sport model. It's just the sound, but good thing is Lexus didn't add any synthetic or fake engine noise in the car. So I prefer this over having a real fake and yeah, cheesy uh, engine noise coming from the speakers of the car. So let's see that as a big plus. Now, talking about fuel efficiency, uh, my average fuel consumption over the last two weeks of driving this car, mixed highway, mixed back roads, mixed very sporty driving, and with very comfortable driving, my average fuel consumption is 6 liters per 100 kilometers. And for the size and the weight of this vehicle, that's really good. I mean, this car has the size of my Lexus LS and it has the fuel consumption of my Toyota Starlet. So that's pretty darn good. I must say this car is on the heavier side. I believe it's 2010 kilos. If I'm mistaken, I'll blink in the correct number in screen. So yeah, it is on the heavy side of things. And over here, yeah, yeah, you feel that pain in the road taxes. It would be nice if Lexus could find a way to lighten this vehicle for the next model generations. And talking about the drivetrain, this being a front-wheel drive car that replaces a rear-wheel drive car, uh, I think Lexus did really well with the suspension tuning and suspension setup. I found myself on a longer uh, bending road and on some uh, roundabouts where I wanted to play a little bit and want to rotate the rear end but then I realized it's a front wheel drive car and it just doesn't do that. But anyway, for the rest of it, suspension tuning, drivetrain tuning, top notch. So I just mentioned my two project cars in a comparison. I have a Lexus LS400 and a Toyota Starlet. Uh, links are up here. Uh, Lexus ES does have the size interior space, ride refinement and comfort of the Lexus LS and at the same time it has the fuel economy of the smaller Starlet. Now keep in mind that's an automatic fuel economy of a manual Starlet is better. But I wanted to say with that is yeah this shows how far car technology has come in 25-30 years. But on the other hand, uh, this being a sporty model, it also has the top speed of the Toyota Starlet, which is around about 170 kilometers an hour. 
and this is limited to 180 kilometers an hour so if you go out on the autobahn and you want to impress other cars keep in mind that the top speed is limited to 180 kilometers an hour so we're approaching the highway let's do a little stretch of highway to see how this car performs and how it sounds under heavy acceleration let's flick the car in sport plus mode already so there's the on ramp and let's see if we can hit 140 kph full throttle here power comes at 5700 rpm which is now which is red line for this engine 120 130 it's very controlled it's very composed and that's enough for now i think that's quick enough for this car so let's slow down a little bit have to talk about the headlights i was doing this stretch of highway a couple of evenings ago there was a lot of traffic on the highway the adaptive high beams work really well but i did notice that it's a continuous light show from a driver's perspective the other cars on the, on the road probably don't notice that there's a lot going on in these headlights but from my perspective of a driver of this car with adaptive headlights it was a continuous light show in front of me where the, where the headlights tried to blend out uncommon in traffic and traffic in front of me um, so I found myself switching it off most of the times during evening drives uh, the adaptive high beams work best on back roads alrighty folks we've got a couple of kilometers in front of us till we're at the middle of nowhere we'll give my final thoughts on the Lexus ESF Sport um, see you in a minute well we're back at the middle of nowhere but since it's very windy today let's head inside the car where i'll give you my final thoughts so the lexus es has been on sale for almost six years now which means it's basically halfway through its life cycle but thanks to the updates and upgrades it received last year it can keep up with its competitors and i must add that its competitors mainly the german ones are much newer and maybe more sophisticated especially when you look at the suspension but the lexus can keep up easily with them what Lexus traditionally has done well is ride comfort and ride refinement. The ES in its basis is a comfortable cruiser. When you look at the German and the Korean uh, comp competition, uh, they offer mostly a more sophisticated suspension where they use aluminium and other lightweight alloys. And also they have a more complex, more complicated suspension set up in terms of linkage. This derives from a shared Toyota Lexus platform, which means that the suspension is mostly steel, steel components with a little bit of aluminium here and there. One thing it does really well, as said, is ride comfort, and this being an F Sport. Um, really add something to that the uh, depth of suspension the adaptive variable shock absorbers uh, really do something for both the ride comfort and the sportiness when you click this car into sport plus mode all of a sudden it's a very well handling very well steering car i must admit i would love to see a little bit more engine power maybe 30 40 horsepower extra and of course the sound of a v6 but then again this standard hybrid drivetrain that's used throughout the ES model lineup does sportiness really well because Lexus has added uh, additional programming for the Sport Plus mode. And as you may have seen in the drive segment, that surprised me and it does that really well. With that, I would like to end this real life car review. I hoped you liked following me along and if you did, uh, please let me know. Subscribe to the channel, put on notifications, um, give me a like. And if you have any questions or constructive feedback, let me know down below in the comment section. For now, I would like to thank you for watching and I hope to see you on the next one. Bye.